So any discussion regarding this feeling-based prayer, this lost mode of prayer, uh, sometimes seems a little more than academic uh, until we can actually apply it in our lives or see it applied in our lives. It's in the late 1990s that I had the opportunity to do precisely that when I saw the footage documenting uh, the healing of a life-threatening condition within the body of a living woman using precisely the kinds of techniques that we're speaking about right now. For me, it was this kind of information that took this lost modality of prayer out of the realm of, of academics and into something that's very real that we can apply in our lives. I had the opportunity during that time to see some video footage of the healing of a three-inch diameter bladder cancer inside the body of a woman who, by medical Western medical standards, had been diagnosed inoperable. She had gone, as a last resort, to a medicineless hospital in Beijing, China. It was in this medicineless hospital where they began simply by addressing uh, the life-affirming ways that she could change how she was living her life. They taught her life-affirming ways to breathe and life-affirming ways to nourish her body gentle movements to stimulate the energy centers in her body. And as she was doing these and strengthening her body, at one point it made sense to undergo a process. Now I'd like to, to share this, I'd like to describe it to you uh, as a very potent example of how the feeling world inside of our bodies has a direct effect, uh, in this case a very graphic effect, on the world beyond our bodies. So in the video documentation, the film shows a woman lying on a, uh, in, in a hospital room. She's fully awake. She's fully conscious. She believes in the process that's about to happen. Before her, there is an ultrasound technician who is running an ultrasound wand over her lower abdomen that we can see on a split-screen television. And on the left-hand side of the screen, they do a snapshot, a freeze frame of an instant in time for reference so we can see what her condition looked like in that instant in time. On the right-hand side of the screen, we are able to watch real-time as three practitioners stand behind her, working with the energy in her body and with the feelings in their bodies. And what they do is they begin to chant a word that to them they've agreed upon that reinforces the feeling within them that she's already healed. The chant essentially says, already healed, already done. And as they begin to, to have this feeling and to say these words among themselves, on the computer screen, on the television screen, we can watch in real time this cancerous tumor as it disappears in less than three minutes real time. It's not like time lapse on a documentary where you see a rose unfold uh, in 30 seconds in something that normally takes days. This literally happens in less than three minutes. Her body responded to the feelings of the practitioners who were trained to have the kinds of feelings that they were having. And all they were feeling was the feeling of what it feels like to be in the presence of a woman who is already healed, fully enabled, fully capacitated. They were not seeing her as a woman who was sick, and they weren't saying, bad cancer, you've got to go away. It's a very, very different way of thinking about things, and it's a very graphic example of precisely how, uh, how this principle works. I had the opportunity to speak to the gentleman, Luke Chen, that actually created this film, and I asked him a question. I said, what if those three practitioners weren't there? I said, could this woman have done this? Could any of us do this on our own? And he smiled at me when I asked him the question. He said, he said Greg, in all probability, she probably could have done it alone. However... There's something about us humans in that we seem to feel more empowered and stronger when we're supported by others in the things that we believe in and in the things that we choose to accomplish. So while she probably could have had this feeling and done it herself, having these three practitioners work with her uh, was the threshold that it took for her body to respond. All they were doing was having the feeling as if she were already healed, and in less than three minutes her body responded. What Western physics now is beginning to tell us is that the same energy, the same field that led to the healing in this woman's body also leads to peace between nations. It's the same thing, different scale, same principle. And I've been involved in experiments where hundreds of thousands of people 
joined together through the World Wide Web. We were coordinated on the Internet at a given hour of time, a window of time, when we were trained to feel the feelings of peace in our bodies during that time. And when we did that, statistically, what happened in events around the world, there were wartime events, there were uh, 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 bombings, aer aerial bombings in Iraq that were scheduled, that were reversed during the window of time when this prayer was happening. Crimes against people declined, emergency hospital room visits declined. There are, was a computer research project at Princeton University that was able to document the field of consciousness on a global level while these prayers were going on and they saw a, a little glitch, a, a glyph on the screen indicating that consciousness was responding to hundreds of thousands of people feeling the feeling of peace in the moment that it was occurring. And what this tells us is that the field we're working with is a measurable field. You can pick it up with equipment. It could be measured uh, on the computer screen. This was part of the uh, uh, the, the research project at Princeton University that was called the Global Consciousness Project. So the field is real, it's out there, and it responds to us in ways now that we're only beginning to understand. Even more recently, the research that's been done by the scientist Masaru Emoto regarding the relationship between human emotion, human feeling, and water drops is showing this relationship even more poignantly. What has happened is that these scientists, this particular research project, has discovered that droplets of water that make up over 70% of our world anyway and 70% of our bodies, that these droplets of water respond to human emotion whether it is felt in the body or as it is actually written on labels that are placed on the vials of water and the emotion of the researcher as the labels are being written and placed onto those vials. The vials are then frozen for a, a specific period of time, removed from the freezing process and as they begin to thaw they crystallize and the crystals are the telltale sign of what is happening with the emotion for example they've taken water highly polluted highly toxic water from some of the most uh, 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 polluted dams in the center of Japan this water has never been known to crystallize they just can't get it to crystallize and when you look at it under a microscope what you see it's a very muddy very nebulous form, there are no symmetry, there's no uh, uh, crystalline structure whatsoever before the emotions are in place. After the emotions are there, for example, when 500 people pray over some of this most polluted water, the before image shows the water in its toxic state. The after image of the same water shows this water beautifully formed, beautifully clear, beautifully crystalline, perfectly symmetrical, purely from the result of human emotion interacting and human feeling interacting with this field of water. Some of the other research has shown families where children and their parents have encircled a vial of water in a room that has never been found to crystallize. Again, some of the very highly polluted and toxic water. And what they do, they make a game out of it. The children, they send love to the water. They say, we love you, water. We appreciate you, water. Thank you, water, for what you bring to our world and our lives. And in that innocence, they are eliciting these genuine states of emotion. And as the research continues, it is precisely these vials of water that have received this kind of energy from, uh, from the children and their families, feelings that the ancients called prayer, that the water begins to crystallize into beautiful, uh, symmetrical, very clear forms, showing once again that there's a direct effect between, uh, between what we feel in our bodies and what's happening in the world beyond our bodies. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, very poignant example of how each of us has an opportunity to participate, not to control and manipulate, but rather participate in the events of our world, the events of our lives, our families, our communities, and our bodies through the field that links all in creation.